Welcome to everyone present here. I am Sangeeta Lakshmi, working as assistant professor in ET department at RMT College of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to start the unit 4 routing architecture in FPTA architecture and applications. First of all, we have to know what is mean by routing. Routing means it is a connection. That is, routing is the process of creating the physical connection between components present on an IC, right? How we are making the physical connection means by depositing metal and joining metal segments through wires, antifuses or random access memory cells depending on the design methodology. So, which kind of programming methodology we are using depending upon that we can use antifuse, uh, SRAM as well as EPROM technology also. So, routed metal part must remain some specification that is, it has to meet the timing details block Q as well as it has to um, follow the some do rules that is design rule. Okay, so um, any routing metal has to follow the three things, one is timing block Q as well as design rule checker requirement, DRC means design rule checker. So, the main objective of any routing is to, we have to choose the shorter connection length and we have to avoid the congestion. Congestion means uh, the required resource must be less than the available resource, that is called congestion. Okay, so we have to always avoid the congestion. If you want to avoid the congestion means um, the required resource must be less than the available resource, that is called condition free and we have to use the very very less number of uh, programming elements between the two uh, component right in order to reduce the delay especially in the critical part. So, the main objective is to uh, reduce that is we have to reduce the uh, shorter length between the two component and avoid the congestion. Third one is we have to use very less number of programmable switch to connect between the two components to reduce the delay. Okay. So, routing usually uh, performed in two phases. One is global routing, another one is detailed routing. See the picture here. Uh, the routing is not done in a particular layer. It, it has many layers. Right. Um, layer 1 to even um, more than 10 layers also they will ask um, to make the connection between two components. See this diagram it clearly shows that many number of layers they have used for making connection. Right? Okay. Next we are going to see the global routing. So, how the connection? First of all, we have to know how the connections are made. For example, if you have three instances, right? If you have three instances, if you want to make the connection between these instances, we have to use a vertical track as well as horizontal track okay and uh, these vertical and horizontal track are present in different layers so if you want to connect these two different layers we have to use the wire right so the vertical as well as horizontal tracks are called as metal traces right and if you want to make the connection between two layers we want the wires that is shown in this figure Right. This yellow color line is the vertical track, this uh, green color is uh, called as horizontal trace or horizontal track. Okay. And um, so first of all we are going to see global routing. Global routing means which will assign the loose path around the cells okay, without specifying the actual geometric layout of wires. That is an important point. So, in global routing, the actual layout of uh, any wires we don't know, wire or net. Okay. But in uh, detailed routing, uh, this actual geometric layout we have to use. So, that is the main thing. So, in global routing, which will provide the loose path, right, without specifying the actual geometric layout of wire or net. So, the routing area can be a channel or segment of channel or it may be a switch. Okay. So, here um, the main important issue is the routability. Routability means 
we are predicting before routing we are predicting that the probability of successful connection between the two components that is the routability so since the routability is the most important issue we have to reduce the channel density size right we have to reduce the channel density channel density means in this particular region if you want to make the connection means this region is called as routing region or channel okay this is the uh, region in which we are making the connection between the two modules if you want to make the connection between two modules in this region we are going to use so this region is called as channel or it is called as um, routing region okay so in this how much track can be accommodated within this channel that is called channel density so uh, since the routability is the most important issue we have to reduce the channel density because it is the main uh, optimization objective in any sga global routing okay so here uh, this uh, diagram clearly shows that we have many number of uh, cells right we have many number of blocks or cells uh, if you want to make the connection between the two blocks or more than two blocks uh, we have to use a net or wire right so this global routing will provide the um, loose path between the for example this block and this block if you want to make the connection means this dotted line indicates that this is a loose path which will be assigned by the global routing right through this uh, channel region this is one channel region and see here uh, this is your another region channel two right similarly we have many number of channel regions here we have um, for example in all the places in all the places we can use this is the channel 3 and this is channel 4 this is channel 5 channel 6 channel 7 like that these all the regions that um, in which we are making the connection between the two blocks okay so what are all the input we have to given to the global routing means so we have to give these all the input the first one is netless what is meant by netless netless is nothing but the gate right and its interconnection that is called netless from that only we can we can get the information that uh, which are the blocks we have to make the connection right so the netless will provide which block we have to make the connection right and uh, timing budget for critical nets so critical nets only decide the maximum speed of the any circuit right so what is the maximum time or budget for the particular critical path right that also we have to given to the global routing so if you want to um, uh, start the uh, routing with the two phases one is global routing and one is detailed routing so first in global routing these all the inputs we have to given the first one is netless second one is the timing detail maximum time required for the critical path we have to specify that is the second one and third one is location of location information of block right suppose this is the block 1 this is the block 1 this is the block 2 it is block 3 block 4 like that we have many number of blocks right so this is also block 7 block 8 block 9 block 10 so many number of blocks are available here so we need the the location exact location of each block that is the third information we have to give fourth one is location of information about the pin see here this is one pin this is another pin this is third pin right and this third pin here it is connected right similarly this is the fourth uh, net means this is also fourth net it is fifth one means here it is fifth one so net 1 net 2 net 4 like that we have this is nothing but the net or it uh, net is nothing but the more than 
one pin which is having same potency that is called net right so the location about the uh, each and every pins also we have to given to the global routing the last one is the delay r to delay per unit length on each metal layer i told you in the initial of this session <coughs> we want many layers right many layers layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 layer four, up to we have more than 10 layers we can use for the ic so here each layer what is the r to delay per unit length right so per unit length what is the r to delay we have to specify and this is the input we have to given for the global row so five input first one is net length second one is timing that is propagation delay for the critical part and third one is location about the block and location about each and every pin and r to delay per unit length on each metal layer so these all the inputs we have to given to the global routing see we are going to see what is the global routing algorithm we are going to use for this so one of the algorithm is called maze routing which is used for global route so in this we have uh, three main steps one is expand second one is backtrace and third one is clear up here you can see if you want to make the connection these all the cells right so these all the cells in this cells if you want to make the connection you have to uh, run the wire either by using this cross or else you can bend right from here to here it, it is possible for example i will draw here if you have the box like this you can make the connection like this this is cross okay or else if you want to make the bend you can use this but you should not use this kind of connection this cross is not at all possible right so cross and bend or it is possible cross that is like this connection is not possible so here you can see we have many number of cells right in this the yes this cell is called as source cell and this is called target cell so if you want to uh, find out the shortest distance between the source cell and target cell how we have to find out means we have to follow three steps one is expand backtrace and clean up so one by one we are going to see what is expand first what is clean up expand See, we have to start from the source cell. Okay. See, expand one cell at a time until all the shortest path from S to that is source to target or found. So, one cell at a time we have to expand. See here. So, we have to start from the source. How we have to expand? This means it has to create a wave front. That means if we are thrown the stone on the um, any um, pond so how it will the wave will be propagate means like this only it will wave front will be um, expand or propagate right from the center point so similarly this expansion we have to create like a wave front of path right so this is your um, starting cell so from here we have to find the other new cells right other new cells which are reachable at path length 1 from here to it is we have to travel means it requires one path length from here to here it is one path length similarly from here to here one path length here also one path length so these all the four cells we are finding that we are marking that it is two because from the new cells uh, num numbered as two no from here to if you want to reach the source cell it requires one path length similarly next we have to start uh, from here to if you want to reach the source cell we have to um, go to follow the pa uh, two path lengths right from here to here if you want to reach we have to uh, follow the two path lengths so we have to make the mean here is 3 similarly from here to here if, if you want to reach it requires two path lengths So we, here we have to make three, and here also it is three. In here also three. Here also three. Similarly, directly if you want to go here also it is three. 
it is 3 to 3. It's like a wave front, right? From the center it is keep on, keep on it is increasing. Like that, the next will be coming here. So, next and next cells we have to find uh, for the path length of 2, path length of 3, path length of 4 until the target is reached. Right? This is the expansion. And second one is back trace. Back trace means, see here, actually we have reached the target cell now. Right? By expanding from the source cell, we reach the target cell. After reaching this target cell, we have to go for the back trace in order to find out the shortest path from the target to uh, source cell. We have to go from back trace. Right? So, this is the path we have. But many number of other this side also we can move from here to here. Right? So, since there are many paths uh, back optimization information can be used to select the best one. Right? Even this side also you have to make the connection or this side also you, we can make the connection. So, many paths are available. So, we can use the optimization information can be used to select the best one. Right? So, after that we have to mark then this uh, blue color line from the target cell to source cell. This blue colored line is called as abstract. Right? This is called abstract. So the third step is we have to clean up the grid for the next net. See here, uh, we have uh, found the shortest distance between the target cell to the source cell. Means we have to mark this as the backlog or abstract. This is called backlog or it is called as abstractal. Why it is called as abstractal means further if you want to find out the distance between the source and the target cell means and this already we have used to this right this abstractal we should not use. We should not use this. Instead of that we have to uh, around that is we have to root the connection around this net. Right? How we have to find out? You can see the next diagram. See here. So, if you want to make the connection between the source cell and target cell, this time we have to um, make the connection around this blockage. We should not travel through this blockage. Instead of that, we have to route around this blockage. Okay? I hope everyone clear about this global routing. Thank you all.